going to take a journey today, a journey between the MXR Micro Amp used by John Frusciante and the MXR Distortion Plus used by Randy Rhodes. The schematics are very similar. We're going to convert this pedal into a Distortion Plus, add some switches so it can be a Micro Amp or a Distortion Plus, and we're going to enjoy both worlds of 80s metal and Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> John Frusciante's board looks something like this. He has a big muff, but I think it's a more vintage one than this one. He has the MXR microamp, and then he has a couple of DS2s. What Randy Rhodes has is essentially a microamp feeding an MXR 10 band EQ. So we'll set up the EQ later. Uh, but first, let's get on and modify this guy so it can be a distortion plus. Let's start with the schematic analysis. Here's our schematic, op amp gain set between here and here, uh, low end filtering is set here, quite a high value, 0.1 microfarads, huge value here, and so what this is going to give us in, to in terms of tone shaping, scroll down to the frequency response curve, is a very flat frequency response, and so this is, this is quite a clean boost. Now, if we compare that to the Distortion Plus, and the schematic here is similar. Gain set by these two. Uh, the gain is more like 200 as opposed to 25 on this. And we have a small value here, which means um, the low frequencies are attenuated. And then we have another value here going to ground. Uh, that means some of the high frequencies are attenuated. And then, of course, this has a clipping stage as well. And that gives us, ignoring the clipping stage, if we go down to the frequency response curve, you can see we're peaked at around 3-ish, one, 1 kilohertz to 1 kilohertz to 3 kilohertz is, is this area here. So this is, this is the peak. So... One of the first things that we have to do with the microamp is be able to switch the capacitors that define the tone and do a couple of frequency response tests and see if we're achi achieving something in this ballpark of, of tone. Going back to the electro smash analysis of the microamp and scrolling down here to the schematic, there's, there's three things that we want to do. First of all, we want to change the frequency response of the pedal and be able to switch that between microamp frequency response and distortion plus. And so we're going to play with this capacitor, this capacitor, and a capacitor here that should go to ground that will affect the high frequency roll off. Second is gain. On the microamp, the gain is set, max gain is set by this and this, so it's about 25. On the distortion plus, it's 200, so we want to look at how we want to do that. And then in combination, we need to add a clipping stage here. Uh, germanium diodes were used in the Distortion Plus. So they have a 0.3 voltage drop as opposed to a 0.7 with silicon. And I'm in two minds. I can have a switch, I think, that would do that, that would switch it between flat frequency response and uh, mid-peaked frequency response. And then I can have a switch that switches in the, the, uh, the clipping stage. I don't know whether I need to change the gains because this gain of 25 when the thing's on full it's already clipping like mad and Randy Rawls used uh, humbuckers which you know are, are pretty high voltage output pickups uh, in the region of 700 millivolts maybe a peaking out over a volt so when you put that kind of signal into here and from what I've read he had the gain set on max so this was already uh, this is already clipping and so we send a, a very high voltage clip circuit, a clip signal to the, the diodes and they're just being driven really hard and just switching on and off like mad. And I don't think an increase in gain would make any difference. But we'll see when we go through this. We'll, we'll do some measurements and verify some of this. So those are the three things that need to change. And I'm planning on changing two at this point until I can prove that changing the gain will have a real a real effect.
I've pulled it apart. One note that this already has a mod that I did. It's a high headroom mod. Got a rail supply voltage of 24 volts. Again, I don't know how much that's going to affect it because don't forget we have uh, germanium diodes with a 0.3 volt forward voltage on the output of the distortion plus. So I don't think the rail voltage will, will matter that much. But then, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. Here's our op amp. Here's the caps that we're going to change. And I think it should be fairly straightforward. I need to check if there's room for switches. I've identified which capacitors we need to change. So this is the one on the gain stage. And this is the one on the input stage. So we're going to desolder one leg of each one leg of both of those and then add another capacitor another two capacitors and have them on a switch which will allow us to change the frequency response. First of all though, I think we need to do a frequency response measurement. So I've hooked it up uh, to the PC and you can see there's a there's a UA audio universal audio sound card there and I'm using the REW software to do the frequency response measurement. So I'll, I'll take a reference. I've got two plots. The center one here is the reference file and that's the calibration. So we've called out the, the sound card or the UA interface. And then this red one here at the top, that is the frequency response of the microamp and it looks pretty good. So what I'll do now is remove those two capacitors or, or lift the legs of those two capacitors and we'll add in two more capacitors and make the value of those two capacitors effectively much smaller. I lifted the legs of the input capacitor and the feedback capacitor and then I soldered in series the lower values that are used in the distortion plus. So the value in series now will trend more towards these lower values than the, the higher values and what, what I'll do eventually is replace it with a switch. Let's take a look now how this has affected the frequency response of the pedal. Now you can see on the plot we have a low frequency cut which is excellent. Uh, starting at a kilohertz. Uh, the high frequency cut I think will come when we do the clipping stage. So I'm going to make these uh, these two capacitors switchable and label it LF cut. I've added the switch. Here it is. The caps are underneath. Hot glued everything in so it's mechanically good for a number of years. And the schematic is essentially this drawing here. So these two are the lower values, the distortion plus values. And these two are the higher values, the uh, microamp values. So when the switch is closed, it's a double pole, double throw switch, then it's, MX, it's, it's full frequency response. And then when the switch is open, these become the dominant values and it's the uh, low cut, low cut frequency response. So let's just double check that with the frequency response measurement. With the switch in the open position, you can see we have a nice low cut. And then if I put the switch in the closed position and um, we get the MXR microamp uh, frequency response. So it, it looks good. That's a, that's a nice uh, mod to take some of the bass out of the pedal. And now let's go on to doing the clipping circuit with the addition of the high cut filter. First, I think we should do a tone test. So I've got the guitar on uh, neck pickup. It's a P90 feeding a... Super Crush 100 amp, got the gain set to about three quarters and the caps are set to the MXR micro amp. Let's go to the high gain JCM 800 and get on the bridge pickup, turn up the gain. So now we've got clipping. We are getting there. Um, but don't forget, we are overdriving the high gain amp with a very high 
voltage output from this pedal. The next stage is to add the clipping diodes and also a, a low pass filter so we can cut the top end off the signal as well so get rid of some of the, the fizz. Uh, but the output voltage of this pedal is going to drop significantly when we put the clipping circuit in from 16 volts peak to peak down to something like 1.4 volts peak to peak or even less depending on the type of diode. So we're going to use germanium so we're going to be in the region of like half a volt of output half a volt 0.6 volts maybe getting to 0.7 so let's go ahead now and do the clipping and low pass filter modification and put that on a switch i think the logical location for the clipping switch the clipping option switch is going to be in this area here next to the foot switch and the output jack and I'm going to lift this resistor where is it I'm going to lift R3 completely out of the circuit that's a 470 ohm and then wire that or a new version of it around the around the switch and at the same time add the clipping diodes and the filter circuit around the switch as well and then probably just hot glue it in over here similar to what we did over here so let's let's go ahead and make that mod i've lifted the resistor got two wires now coming out they'll go to this switch here so i've already soldered in the 470 ohm so when the switch is in one position it acts just like the mxr and now what i'm going to do is put the diodes in into the this part and I got these. This is my rear diode draw, and I think we'll just go with these bad boys. 1N 34A's ITT, new old stock. So let's get these wired in and see if we can get to a tone test pretty quickly. I finished the mod, got some hot glue uh, for mechanical robustness. Uh, we have one schematic and two very different pedals. So right now with both the switches in the up position, it's a microamp, a very high headroom microamp. And this this here is our, is our low cut. So if I press this, you can see the sine wave goes down a little bit. It's a one kilohertz sine wave. So it starts to roll off at a kilohertz. So that's why we see that. So I'll keep it in that position because that is the distortion plus position. And this one uh, puts the clipping diodes into the output stage. And you can see now a significant drop in voltage. So let's crank that up a bit. And so we're looking at 450, 460 millivolts peak to peak on this scope. And we can adjust the gain. And you can see it's clipped. And there's that, it's this capacitor here that's creating the rounding. So it's not as a harsh distortion. But just again for reference, if I just turn this up, it's massive. 15, 15 volts versus a few hundred millivolts. Put it back. Turn the voltage up. Anyhow. Let's uh, let's drill some holes in the box, get these switches in place, and give it a tone test. Ready for the tone test? We've got a vintage MXR Graphic IQ. I've uh, set it up how I think it should be. Uh, we've got the modified microamp, and then we're playing into a JCM800 Greenback 4B12s. And this is without the pedal. <laughs> Okay, let's put the pedal on. Fantastic. Fantastic.